Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the other day Apple released macOS Sequoia 15.2 Beta 2. macOS 15.2 Beta 2 is available to developers and hopefully very soon to public beta testers as I think it's ready and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now this is available to all macOS 15 supported devices again if you're testing this out and the overall size of it was 3.95 gigabytes. It includes some nice feature changes, updates, and significant things worth talking about, so I thought we'd cover what's new. Now, along with this, Apple also released many other updates, iOS 18.2 Beta 2, iPadOS 18.2 Beta 2, along with many others that you can see here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll close this out, go to Settings, we'll go down to Storage, and under storage at the bottom, instead of going to the Apple in the upper right, we'll wait for this to load. It will take just a moment here. And once it's loaded, if we scroll to the bottom, go to Mac OS, click the little I, you can see the build number is 24C5073E. And it's taking up 5.35 gigabytes with Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence is supported on all M1 Macs and later. So if you have an M1 Mac, you'll have more features, but there are additional features that are available to Macs without M1 or the newer processors. Now, the first new feature has to do with wallpaper. This is pretty insignificant, but something that Apple finally updated with the new iMac. In our settings, if we go to wallpaper, scroll down here, you'll see the new iMac wallpaper. So we have iMac Silver, Blue, so here's iMac Silver, iMac Blue, iMac Purple, iMac Pink, Orange, Yellow, and iMac Green. Of course, we have the other ones from the previous iMac update, and if we lock the screen here, it doesn't seem to animate or anything. It's just sort of a static image that supposedly spells out iMac. So it's not animated or anything like that, but it's available if you want to use it and will be available for this update once it's released to the public as well. Another new update has to do with weather. You can now place it in the toolbar and it's quite a nice integration. If we go into system settings, go to control center, scroll down all the way to the bottom, you'll see we now have the option for menu bar only. So if we switch this to show in menu bar, We'll see the weather here updated for our location. And if we click on it, we've got a nice little overview. So it's matching what we have over here on the left, but gives additional locations you may have set. And we have other locations here as well. So we can see even more if we want to. And then we can of course open the weather app. So it's a pretty nice integration that carries across the OS. Of course, you can go in here and anything that you have labeled here will show up at the top. So you can add as many as you'd like or remove all of them if you'd like. Another thing that's new that sort of goes along with iOS 18.2 has to do specifically with your iPhone. When you plug it in with a cable, instead of having to enter your passcode to actually trust the Mac, you can now use Face ID. So that's an update with iOS 18.2 Beta 2, and it carries across to Mac as well. Also something that carries across to Mac is if we're using iPhone mirroring, we'll give it a second to load here and connect. Once it's connected, if we go into settings, within settings, under personal hotspot, we can now use personal hotspot at the same time we're mirroring our iPhone. So this is just a nice little update we have here, and you can fully utilize it however you'd like. Now there are more features that are coming that are not Apple intelligence related, but we'll talk about some more of those in just a moment. But as far as Apple intelligence, if we go to system settings, go to Apple intelligence and Siri, and as long as this is enabled and you have this set to English United States, you should be able to try out at least some of these features. All of the Apple intelligence first stage of features are available, but there's a couple new ones to talk about. If we scroll down, we now have extensions for chat GPT. If we go into this, we can set it up, and then we can integrate it within Siri, compose text and writing tools, and it works with a ChatGPT account. If we click next, again, you've got more information here. We'll enable it, and then we can sign in if we have an account with them. So we have a current limit. You can just use it with this, or we can sign in with our account. Now, once you're signed in, you'll actually see that you'll have a limit or maybe you have unlimited as far as the overall subscription. So if you're using this, you can upgrade and it will show the status here as well. You don't have to have this enabled in order to use it, but you could run into a limit and we can use that within Siri. So for example, if we close this and then if we go to the upper right and click Siri, we can say, ask chat GPT what the weather will be next week. And instead of using the OS itself to do that, it will go with chat GPT and get the information from there. And there it goes. Could you specify the location? Sure. Charlotte and see, we'll try it again here and see what it says. 
and it may take a moment, but again, it's going to use chat GPT if you ask it to. So here's the forecast from them. It may or may not actually add up to what we have here with the weather app, but either way you can use chat GPT for that. You, anything you can ask chat GPT with, you can ask within Siri now, but just be aware your information is being sent there as well. Another thing they've added is image playground. So if we go into image playground within image playground, we can now use this. Now you may have a little bit of a wait list. I've tried to create a few different things, but if we go in and create, we can make whatever we want, choose a person, for example. So I've picked myself here, maybe it's sunset and maybe sci-fi and let's see what it comes up with. So we'll give it just a moment here. And now we have a couple different options so we can switch between them and it's sort of a cartoonish version of myself. If you want to modify it, you can, you can give it a thumbs up or thumbs down. You can of course save it or just go back and create another one. So you can create whatever you'd like a house on the beach at sunset and see what it comes up with. So again, we'll give it a moment. It's creating a house on the beach at sunset and you can use this to create anything. That's not really a name brand. So maybe, and I've used this before, a Porsche 911 on a road near the beach. And it doesn't like actual branded things. It says unable to use that description. So you can't do that, but you could change it to maybe a car on a road near the beach and it will draw a car. So it's next to a house since I already have that and it puts them together all sort of cartoonish though. So this is a little bit different than what we get with maybe Gemini or Dolly or those sort of image generators. So a little bit more cartoony, but it is available if you want to use it to go along with image creation. If we go into messages within messages, if we bring up an emoji keyboard, we can see different gen emoji that we've created on iOS 18.2 beta two. However, it's not available directly within Mac OS. It seems just yet. So we can again, bring that up and you'll see all of the different things here as far as emoji and different stickers you might have, but it doesn't look like you can actually create them here. However, you can create a couple other things. If we click the plus button, we do have image playground here where it will bring it up and then we can create something directly from here, which sort of is like gen emoji. So maybe a hamburger with a hat. Um, and that's what I created before. And it sort of integrates the same way. So again, this is sort of like gen emoji. Let's do this. We'll click it, click here, a hat on smiling with eyes. So this is sort of like gen emoji, just image playground. It's sort of all the same thing, a little creepy here, but this gives you an idea of what it can do. So if we click done, so that's sort of like gen emoji built in, but not exactly how iOS does it. If we go into notes, we have additional features and within notes, of course, we have our Apple intelligence button, but we have a couple new options here. We can describe a change or something we're creating, or we can compose. And if we go to compose, we can actually use this with chat GPT. However, it says you've reached your daily limit for chat GPT's advanced capabilities. So I either have to upgrade from here or just continue to use this. So you can actually generate whatever you'd like as far as typing and using Apple intelligence. You just can't go out and compose using chat GPT. So this is a new note talking about Apple intelligence. And then of course you can highlight this, do whatever you'd like, click on the button here and then make it more friendly. It will change it. This is a new note about Apple intelligence. I don't expect it to change it much based on that, but this just gives you an idea of what you can actually do with it. Now, outside of Apple intelligence, there's some additional features as well. If we go into Launchpad, the first thing is they've upgraded the Siri icon. So it's now matching Apple intelligence. So it looks a little bit different. It just brings up Siri. So that's been updated. And then something else that's been updated has to do with find by. If we go into find by the first thing we get is a new splash screen that says what's new in find my and share an item location. So we'll click continue. And if we click maybe on something that we have as far as an item, so maybe my backpack here, click the eye. And we now have an option to share this as a lost air tag. You can see show contact info, allow others to get in touch and share an item location. If we click on this, we can now share this with someone such as maybe a trusted person or someone in an airport for a limited time, click continue. And then you can share it with this code. Just text this to someone you actually trust, and then they can see the location of your device. So if we click done, 
you'll see it has an expiration date on it. So it shares it for a limited amount of time. And then you can just turn this off if you'd like. So turn off item location. So now you can share it with a trusted individual. If maybe you lost a bag at an airport. Another thing that's been updated in this version is if we go to our apple.com website and go to Mac accessories, they've actually added support for the new magic keyboard, magic trackpad and magic mouse with USB C for whatever reason, it didn't work in the first beta and it doesn't work with older versions of Mac OS just yet. It only seems to work with Mac OS 15.1. So at least it supports it on this version as well. Another thing that's new has to do with Apple vision pro. And while I can't show it to you right here directly, I do have a screenshot in the vision pro that we now have ultra widescreen. So here's when I was trying out image playground and you can see ultra widescreen. And this is really great as when you're using it, it has higher resolution than before when you're mirroring your Mac display with the Mac on the vision pro. And as you drag this closer to you, it actually starts to wrap around you. So this is a really great update. It actually makes using vision pro as a monitor much better. So it's something that you may want to do a little bit more. However, there are some latency issues sometimes. As far as overall performance in this version, well, it's been fine on this Mac for a few days. It's been more stable than before with beta one. I had some issues connecting to vision pro. For example, this one seems to be a little bit more stable. Again, the earlier one before had some issues. I expect that. And as far as battery, well, standby battery has been pretty good. It hasn't been plugged in for a while. And if we go into our battery settings, you'll see it was last charged to 99% yesterday. So it's been uh, quite a while now, I think. So if we go here, you'll see, I used it for a little bit and then I didn't use it for a few days. So I don't find that I have to charge this a lot if it's in standby mode, but overall it seems to be holding up well. This has 100% battery capacity. So again, doing just fine. I don't really pay attention to it. I just leave it how it is by default and it's good to go. As far as the overall release notes, this is on the public facing website. You can see here, we have some resolved issues with things such as activity kit, authentication services, and there's still some known issues with chat GPT integration. So it says for devices with MDM profiles, users with anonymous restrictions are unable to sign out. There's also some known issues with NS writing tools. Screen capture has some new features here where it's available for catalyst applications and Swift UI gets some updates as well for developers. So quite a few good things here, but some resolved issues, but there's still some known issues as well. So if you have some issues, make sure you report them in feedback. And if they're listed here, I wouldn't really worry about it, but if it's something different, definitely report it. If you're wondering if you should install Mac OS 15.2 beta two, if you don't have the betas on your machine and it's a production machine, I highly recommend against it. I do not put this on my main production machine because I use that to make videos like this one. So I typically say if you have a machine, that's not really something that's critical, maybe it's just casual use at home, then it's worth trying out. But if it's critical to production, I would hold off until the RC is released. Now, when it comes to the public release of Mac OS 15.2 and iOS 18.2, this will bring Apple intelligence to more countries. You can see that in the initial release notes here, where it says in order to use it, both device language and Siri language must be set to English us. And all of these other countries are available as well. UK, New Zealand, and more. Now that means it's rolling out to additional countries and it will slowly roll out to others. For example, here it says Apple intelligence is not currently available in China. So we don't have specific dates for this. However, as far as when to expect the next beta and public release, well, according to what we've been seeing, I would expect maybe beta three, possibly on the 11th and concurrent betas all the way until December 2nd, when we expect a public release, according to Mark Gurman, he got this right with iOS 18.1 and Mac OS 15.1. And there's no reason to think he wouldn't have it right this time around. He said, if everything goes to plan, we'll see it on December 2nd. So we could have a few more betas until then to refine everything, but that's when we expect the public release. And as far as the next betas and Apple intelligence to roll out to more countries. So that's everything in Mac OS 15.2 to two. If you found anything else, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.